this is, this is, this is. Excellent. Well, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, are you still in Chicago? No, I live in, um, I, I mean, I moved there uh, from there about seven years ago. Okay. Um, I'm like not maybe about 45 minutes, an hour away from St. Louis in, the, in, the, in Illinois. Oh, yeah. Like Southern Illinois. <laughs> I, a good friend of mine, uh, Moon Valjean, he's a radio guy um, on uh, The Point. Uh, radio station in St. Louis, and so yeah. we, I was just—I just had him on the podcast uh, a few oh, episodes nice. ago, and so I'm laughing because we talked all about St. Louis, about how amazing the food is, but then we were just shitting on the airport. The airport is just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> the airport's kind of hard to—I think it's hard to get to personally, but I mean, I guess you know I haven't lived in the area long enough, but. Um, I, I, every time I've been to the St. Louis airport, I've been kind of confused and like getting in and out. And it's been kind of a pain when you're at the airport. And, you know, yeah. and I live from Chicago, which is O'Hare, which is like the biggest airport in the world. And yet it's still, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, O'Hare, I've slept there a few times, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we all have. Well, yeah. you know, the reason I mentioned Chicago, obviously, I, you know, that's where you're from, but. I'm a huge Screeching Weasel fan, Queers fan. Um, you know, that was some of the music that I was listening to in blasting in the truck back when I worked this like rental maintenance job in high school. And, uh, you know, I, I would love, you know, to start out. Uh, sure. I want to hear what was it like growing up in Chicago and how did you get into punk rock? Well, um, okay. Well, I'm from Des Plaines, Illinois, which is. Um, Okay. It's right near O'Hare Airport. Sure, yeah, okay. So I grew up with airplanes over my head constantly. <laughs> Displanes, is that how you say it? Because I always thought it as like like a French word, Displane, Displane. Displane, no, no, it's Displanes, <laughs> yeah. Displanes. That's how it's said, yeah. It's, it's just right outside of O'Hare Airport. So, like, people rock and then. So you're already there. used to not hearing so, yourself. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pr I mean, pretty much. I had tra planes, trains, and no automobiles, but uh, yeah, a lot of planes and trains around me my whole life. Um, no, I mean, when I was growing up, I gravitated to music like right off the bat. Like when I was about five, I heard um, the kid across the street played me Kiss and David Bowie. And um, I, I thought David Bowie was pretty cool, but Kiss I thought was the best. I just thought that was great, the greatest thing ever. So, um, you know, at that a really, really early age, I started buying like Kiss records and then Kiss led to ACDC and mm -hmm. and Rush and Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and Iron Maiden and all that. And so the Scorpions led to Slayer and Metallica and Metallica, you know, they had Misfit shirts on and Discharge and, you know, they were always had punk rock stickers, you know, and same with Slayer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well. You know who's this band, The Misfits? I mean, if they like them, I think I might want to. I might want to check them out too. So, uh, my friends and I investigating, and you know, we had found um, a, a punk rock radio station in Evanston, Illinois. That's right, like right outside of Chicago, right by the lake. Yeah. And there was a show called Fast and Loud, and that was on Saturday nights at ten o'clock. And they played all like hardcore, really, really great hardcore. And it just kind of opened the doors for stuff. And it, it, you know, I think we may have heard about where the record store was from that show. But from there, like we were just kids and we would, you know, hop on the bus and then take the train, two trains over to the record store. We'd all buy a record, come back, record each other's records. And, um, you know, um, cassette tapes, right? Like you would record them to cassettes. Yeah. Cassettes. Yeah. Right. Back in, right. I'm 51 years old. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you I was, know, do the math. we're talking about the <laughs> 84, 85 ish, okay. you know? So yeah, that was cassette, cassette era for sure. I, I grew up in the cassette right. era as well in the 90 or right. in the eighties was when I was a kid, you know? So, right. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And you know, from there and, I just kind of really started gravitating towards the more earlier punk, um, more like your Ramones, your black flag, your descendants, uh, pretty early on. And like, 
it was one of those things where I always had um, a soft spot for melody. And that came also with, I think, childhood, too. I didn't want to admit it, but I really did kind of like some of those Bee Gees songs that I heard and uh. ABBA and stuff like that. And, you know, some of those 70s bands I kind of had a soft spot for, but I wouldn't tell my friends that because I was like a metal guy. You know what I mean? You wouldn't do that. <laughs> So, um, but I kind of had a soft spot for that stuff. And so when, by the time I heard like the Ramones and the Descendants and stuff, I'm like, you know, they're playing with the aggression and energy I like, but they've got that hook. Mm-hmm. They've got that hook I'm looking for. And it's, it's really sticking with me. Like long after I play the record, you know, and it's, I'm, I'm humming it all the time. I just started gravitating more towards that kind of thing after that. And from there, um, you know, just I, I play the first band I played in was a hardcore band uh, called Generation Waste. We were kind of like seven seconds slash minor thready kind of kind of stuff. That's a cool and, name. Cool name for a band. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had like, you know, the skull with like the mohawk on it and everything like that, you know, singing about unity and stupid shit like that. But, um, you know, I is just kind of the way it was at that time you know you just kind of it was my first band so i just kind of you know kind of went along with uh kind of went along with it you know kind of uh, imitated like my heroes like you know your kevin seconds and your jeff pizzotti's from naked ray gun and stuff like that i was like all right what are they doing all right i'm gonna do the same thing i guess you yeah know, i don't know what i'm doing um so you know but from there i really you know I, I thought like i really wanted to do like something with more something with more melody i was really into like uh, really early bad religion at that point too and like just i don't know, started really getting into the ramones and the descendants and bands like that and i really wanted to gravitate more towards that uh screech and weasel were a band that were uh from a town over for me so um i met those guys because they were they lived close by you know mm. and back then i didn't really know a lot of people um in bands or i didn't know uh many punks at all you know yeah it's pretty rare i mean i had my group of friends in my town but we were you know by the time i had become more of a uh turned into a punk they were still kind of into metal you know yeah <laughs> so like my friends are still metal heads you know all my um, friends are metal heads <laughs> yeah 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 no, i know that song yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true um but yeah no screech and weasel were in the, in the, in the town next next to mine so i, I kind of met him around and mm. there were shows out in the suburbs and stuff like that so wild wild um they asked me to play uh i didn't really know how to play bass but i just kind of figured it out you know just back then you just were in your room listening to records and trying to figure shit out you know at least time. that's that was kind of my that's kind of was how i did it i don't know like a lot of kids if they take lessons or they uh you know, I always wonder how many kids have gone to art school and stuff like that. I mean, I just put on records and that was that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and tried playing along. Yeah, I think it, it can happen in all, you know, there's a spectrum. But for me, sure. personally, I, I took lessons for, I want to say six months. I took bass lessons and I learned 12 bar blues scale. I learned, you know, what everything was, a couple scales. Um, I mean, it definitely probably affected the way I play. You know, and, and kind of like still now I have go to like little riffs. And so I think that's that's something that's good and bad, honestly, you know, because if you learn uh-huh. too much about music too early on, you get really kind of regimented into this. This is the way it's supposed to be, guys, instead yeah. of let's just do what feels right. Right. So, well, that, I mean, let's kind of the beauty of punk rock is that it does break those rules yeah yeah you no know? uh, and there's a be- there's such a beauty to it like like black flag i mean i think about like a greg ginn guitar solo like that really shouldn't work but it does you know it's great <laughs> yeah you know it's all noisy and fucked up and it's but it's awesome it's dissonant you know? yeah it's something yeah, that, yeah. yeah 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 i love that i love that so about punk know. rock i love that stuff um but yeah i think there's a place for both too you know but you can definitely paint yourself into a corner, I think, if you really just think about actual music theory, I think, you know, because yeah. I've taken guitar lessons since then, too. So um, I think Metallica so yeah, is I, kind I, of a, a gateway drug for punk rock. Speaking of what's up, I think Metallica is a gateway drug for punk rock. Like a lot of people I know started listening to like Metallica and then they somehow yeah. ended up punkers, you know. But maybe yeah. that's just because yeah, Metallica yeah. is just 
huge, but, uh, right. But anyway, guitar lessons, you took, like, when did you take guitar lessons forever ago? Guitar lessons. Yeah. I mean, like the early nineties. Yeah. 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 It was like, I was already playing in bands. I was playing screeching weasel at that point, but like probably, I don't know, 92, 93, something like that. That's... started playing, taking guitar lessons. Is that where you learned all those for chord, a bit, chords and, then... and like seventh chord? You you know a lot of like proper voicings and chords, you know, I've noticed from your songwriting. So like you probably learned some of that taking lessons. Like there's all these extra chords like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Screeching Weasel didn't yeah. teach me all those. I mean, although Screeching no. Weasel was fairly musical, not necessarily super early on, but melodic right we didn't do like we stuck to the bar chord though like the sevenths and the minors and stuff like that wasn't really something that we did yeah um, so but you so, learned all yeah, that I, you I, learned I, all that later right in the did you learn that yeah. in the guitar lessons or did you just figure that out uh, a little Probably bit in the both. guitar lessons some just like you know if you get like a beatles or like a, a beach boys like book and you sing along and you play these weird ass chords that actually fit perfectly you go wow it actually should be that chord yeah that really fucked up chord you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like it, it fits that melody perfect i'm like wow yeah i've had that. those ex i've had those experiences you know? i mean yeah i mean most of it was most of it was books but i had some guitar lessons too yeah cool that's insane i mean it, it really only takes a couple lessons just like to learn something new and it, you can go pretty far on on that new new knowledge i feel like like back in the day yeah. doing the same thing you were just talking about I, I, I would like look at a beatles book learn a song learn a new chord and then i'd be like okay i'm gonna write a song with this chord in it that i've never written before you know so right that that's that's some growth like early on i feel like that that a lot of musicians can can bank on you know if you just learn a couple beatles songs you're gonna learn some new shit yeah, yeah. I mean, but I also, I, I can't say enough about, you know, the Ramones approach either. Just sometimes just three chords is great. Absolutely. You know, three bar, you know bar chords, just, just you know, just tear, tear it out. I, I don't know. I, I like both, you know. I um, mm -hmm. guess that's just, I don't know. I mean, we should talk about the Vanable. new. We should talk about the new record, Escape Velocity. Uh, the band Dan okay. Dan Vapid and the cheats. Um, I mean, since we're talking about songwriting, let's talk about these songs. Let's talk about now. Sure. Let's talk about. Uh, I mean, the fact that you've you've been in so many bands over the years, and you've written how, how many songs do you think you've written? Uh, if you could just generalize. Uh, I mean, like published. <laughs> published, like, like let's say published because it's. ASCAP. I mean, it doesn't have to be that official. I would say like, like published. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, I mean, because that's it's a hard question because. Uh, my God, there's so many that never, yeah, haven't I, been recorded yet, and all that. I, I'd say like at least 300. Yeah, okay, um, that's a lot, and that's a lot because that, that would mean that you probably have over a thousand songs that you've, yeah, something like that, like song ideas, yeah. bits and pieces, yeah, whatever. It's stupid, right? Probably over the years, and you'll never remember most of them, right? <laughs> Nowadays, it's easier to kind of record things, but back in the days, either you write it right. down or like, how do you, how did you remember? To, when you were writing back in the day versus maybe now um well sometimes and i still do this to this day on my phone but i'll hum stuff into my phone i used to like have a recorder with me i would even like back recorder. in the 90s yeah just yeah. like a little tiny with like those little mini tapes on them and just kind of hum into that I, I did that quite a bit and jot things down um sometimes things would just It'd be in my head, and then I got home and I played it, and then I didn't forget it. But I forgot some good stuff too, you know. Yeah, once you keep it writing, it, and it just left me. I'm like, God damn it! Yeah, I can't remember it now. And like, I just or like something was off when I picked up my guitar, and it was like it didn't vibe the same or something, you know, that I heard in my head. So yeah, that's happened. That's so it sucks. I love I love talking about songwriting, you know, just as a songwriter because. It opens up like new ideas. It, it gives me confirmation of okay, yeah, I'm. I guess I'm doing it basically kind of like that in my own way, uh, you know. So, but this new album, man, like going back to even the, the one of my favorite songs on the record isn't even a single. It's uh, the talk. Uh, okay. I love the chill vibe. 
I'm a sucker for that doo-wop 50s shit. You know, it leaves you hanging at the end, which I love. So, like, there's, like, multiple parts of the song that I'm like, oh, that was – I like that. You know, and uh, obviously it's not something you would necessarily put first on a, on a record, you know, but – Back in the in the in the in the album, you're kind of ready for something like that, and and it hit me in the right way. It was cool, but um, cool. Yeah, I, I like that. But I Cyber World, what a fun you know a fun song. Like it's like new wave modern punk, um, very flawless. Like you were saying, simple, very simple, but yet really hooky. Which is you what I. Up on me. Oh, are you. I, it should still be recorded. It, it'll it'll catch up. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, you froze up on me for a second there. I was just talking good things about your song, <laughs> but uh, you know about. Oh, thank uh, you. Uh, I moved on to Cyber World, just saying that Cyber World is uh, it's just really fun, like new wave. It's a little set apart from your normal sound, um, in a cool way. Right. Like, and it's got that such a simple sounding song. Yet, if you really listen to it, oh, there's some. These chords are doing some things that aren't just a bar chord and and because each person kind of has a, a layered part i don't know i just dug it i thought i thought it was well done i love that you're talking about you know cyber world which is what you know like just technology and and whatever it is you know but um that one was fun uh i really enjoyed like i said my favorite song was the talk although i'm sure that'll change um tears are falling i thought that that was really clever because it could be done in any musical genre that's the type of song that you could literally hear it as a classical country song like johnny cash could do it oh um yeah. or, or it could even be a death metal song i don't know yeah. but, <laughs> but i the reason or pop. i guess i could see slowing it down or something yeah i mean it could just it could work in many there you go. many different ways right. yeah, yeah yeah but the bridge the bridge i love a good bridge and the bridge is transcendent, uh, which I just found out that a bridge in the UK, in England, is called a middle eight. Did you know that? No. Middle Where eight. Where are you coming up with this shit? It's a middle eight. Uh, it's but a, middle, a, middle, a middle eight? Middle eight. So it's like eight bars in the middle oh. of the song. It's like, well, what if your bridge is only four bars? <laughs> right. Well, exactly. Someone explain to this. Uh, explain this to us. <laughs> eight is very random, don't you think? Yeah, but I mean, I think it's probably just the most common, but I love the bridge on this song, Tears Are Falling. Uh, you know, so just the fact, you know, just on first listen, like my first my first uh, impressions, you know, as I got into the record, I'm still hearing things that are making my ears perk up, which is cool, you know? So cool. congratulations, you guys. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So record's out everywhere. It came out like right before my birthday, November. Um, and so uh, I feel like maybe that's partly why I like it so much, but it just hits, it hits, man. Um, what's it, what's it about? What are these songs about mainly? Is it, is it have a theme? It does have a theme. Um, the album, uh, well, I wanted to try to do something that took the perspective of different people. So what I did was I took a breakup and I put, I thought about it from the point of view of the woman leaving from the guy being left and from the guy convincing the woman to leave. Um, and so there's a first person and third person kind of narration. Cause I didn't want to do everything first person. Cause I thought they would think it was about me when it's not. Um, mm -hmm. But all the songs are connected. Um, basically what I did is I wrote a story based around an event of, of, the destabilizing event, which is a woman leaving mm -hmm. and unannounced. Yeah. She leaves unannounced. And then you get back into all the, of what happened before and then after. And, um, and I, I really found it was surprisingly pretty easy to do to write from a different perspective, you know, and it's kind of fun and fresh too, because I never had done it before. I've always liked to write from one perspective. And so this time I wanted to, just try it from a diff a couple different points of view um, as best as I could, you know what I mean? But, you know, and then so there's a story wrapped around it. I mean, uh, and uh, it kind of works because yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. 
there's some low points on this record. I mean, especially I can't remember the name of the song towards the end, but um, it's sad. And you're like, damn, damn. Maybe it's not even towards the end. Maybe it's one of your singles, actually. I think it's um, re- something in regret or no. So it's like two words. But that was like, oh, man, that's 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 heavy, heavy. Um, let me look up the uh, guilt and relief. Guilt and relief is the name of the, the song. I can see, you know, the whole story in, kind of in crux right there dan you with us i've just been talking so we, we don't have to edit that part yeah. you probably yeah. uh i was talking about right. guilt and relief yeah oh okay that, yeah. yeah it's heavy heavy yeah, man that's... yeah yeah um that one's kind of kind of funny um like i don't know how i mean not funny i know what like, you mean you know, laugh, <laughs> yeah. but i was <laughs> uh, maybe some weirdo to somebody um i don't know how you write songs or people you know write songs but i typically don't write lyrics first but for that one i did the words Mm. were first and then the music i came up with afterwards um it was one of those nights i just kind of went because i had all the the theme and i kind of knew all the you know what they say in uh, the the rules of journalism, right? The <laughs> what's, the where's, the why's. As soon as I had all that figured out, like about the songs, you know, as soon as all my questions were answered, um, like I felt like that just kind of, I don't know, it kind of fell into place. Um, I love it. I yeah. This? It's, well, I was going somewhere with this. Well, just the fact that you wrote the song differently than you normally yeah. would write. Yeah, there's a couple. It, that's it. Thank you. It's okay. Um, there's a couple on there that were I, I wrote lyrics first, which I don't typically do. I usually kind of have get like a vibe out, and then mm-hmm. it, like words start coming as the music's coming. Um, I think most people, I want to say, do it that way. I think I, I don't. I, I'm yeah. I usually write music first and a melody. And then it, I'll write, right. yeah, I'll write a lyric. And then you write the music, the the lyrics to the melody. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, right. So that's I can, what I usually do too. So if I have I didn't for that one, sure, sure. Yeah. So if I have like just even an idea, a da 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 da, da whatever, I right. can like take that and be like, okay, let me like write four of those lines and see if that's if I can figure something out, you know. And I can do that without a guitar. I can just sit sit outside somewhere or walk around and well usually I'm not walking but sitting and just writing on my phone which is new like I used to never yeah. do that I would always have a guitar before but last couple of years things change it's weird right yeah 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 I think there's so many different ways of, of getting the job done I think you know mm-hmm. um do you what so you, know, do you, think- you probably used to Sorry to interrupt. You used to probably used to use a notebook all the time. Like I used to use notebooks to write songs. Now it's pretty much in my phone, and then I transfer it to like my laptop at some point. Is that kind yeah. of how you've been doing lyrics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My phone's ridiculous, and like the like the <laughs> you know like the the voice part, like you the know voice the memos, voice memos. Oh, they're out of control. <laughs> they're they're Rick ridiculous, and there's stuff I need to delete. You know, I mean, a lot of it's ridiculous, but there's some good stuff in there too. And I'm like, all right, well, I got to remember this stuff and. You never know. I don't want to play it even sometimes like even like playing something just slightly different later on. It's like kind of can make the vibe change a little bit. You're like, God damn it. You know, I I know it wasn't quite like it was. It's just slightly different. But what is that thing? You know what I mean? Um, So, yeah, that's why I like just recording everything, writing everything down, recording everything. Absolutely. I mean, you have to. There was that exact thing there's been so many times where i come up with like what i think is like a really catchy part and if i don't if i don't record it i'll forget it and it won't be the same like the the i guess it's called well i call it the um the cadence that's an easy way to describe like the cadence of how you're starting to say a sentence makes all the difference for me like especially like if it's line one in a song it's really okay. important how I start that that sentence and how I fit those words in and how they, you know, because it's going to inform the listener for the rest of the song. Wow. And I don't th- overthink it. I just, 
thing. Okay. I just come out with whatever it is on my voice memo, and then I'll forget it later, and if and I'll notice that it isn't right. Like this isn't hitting the way I I wrote it, you know. And I'll have to go back in my voice memos and re-listen to it. Oh, that's because I didn't start it on this note or whatever, you know, whatever. So right. things like that. Right, yeah. Right. It's very yeah. more technical than it ever was back when it was kind of even with a cassette recorder or a mini cassette recorder and a notebook, you know, I get more right. into it. I get more okay, Mike, surgical. I'm going to change room. Sorry. Okay. No worries. Here just because I think I'm in a bad room where I get bad reception. Sure. So sure. I'm going to another part of the house where I think it's going to give me better internet reception. I love it. No worries. Uh, we it should anyway. Yeah, the uh, it's St. Louis. This. It's St. Louis. You can't expect too too much, right? <laughs> it's not <Yeah>. technically. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I love you, St. Louis. I'm only kidding. <laughs> it's a great town. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I never said I liked them. Yeah, so I live in a I live in a really small town in Illinois, where like ten thousand. Um, so. You know, I'm from like Chicago, so moving here was kind of weird. Um, went from, you know, a city of I don't know how many million to a city of now ten thousand. Some of the, you know, there's a lot of wow. farms. But like my backyard is like uh, a cornfield, so it's a That's big crazy. change. Yeah, that is. <laughs> there's no but no. Yeah, it's not too far from St. Louis though. So if I, I ever want to do anything, see anything, it's it's not too far. It's forty five minutes an hour away. So it's yeah. okay. I grew up in Bremerton, Washington, which is like the west side of Seattle, like across the water. Yeah, but you can drive right. down through Tacoma and then come up, and then you can get there by car, uh, over a bridge. Um, but I mean, same thing. We always had normal things but it wasn't a city so like to go to most of the big shows we had to go to seattle we had to travel so that means waiting until i'm old enough or having a chaperone or whatever but you know life was definitely different over on the peninsula you know where i grew up and and then i sometimes i live in in waco texas as well so we split our okay. time now and that is a, considered a small town in texas but it's three times probably almost four times as big as Bremerton. So it's like right. going there is actually moving up into a bigger city, which right. I didn't even realize because you don't really think of Waco as a big town at all. So, but right. Bremerton's also constantly growing. So as I've lived here my whole life, it's grown and, you know, future shock sets in. You're like, where happened to the old Pappy's uh, local store, family, you know, whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? I mean, of course, you know, that's happening everywhere across the world, but, uh, but it is a trip to like move to a different city and, you know, as an adult, you know, I did it as, as an adult, you know, but it's not the same as like just touring through a city, you know, it's different. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, are you in Washington now? I'm in Washington now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Most of the time I'm in Washington and then, and then we'll, we'll go for a couple months of the year in Waco. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Did it, you it grow out. up with Toby Jag? Toby Jag. Uh, I didn't grow up with Toby, but I, I know him very well. Uh, I, he's not from that area. He is. He came, he came to a lot of shows as a fan. We didn't meet him until he was like already working for fat or oh, what whoever okay. he was yeah yeah so, so like, there's no washington connection or anything like that well there is now but not as well, not as now, kids yeah no up or whatever but he okay. would he but when we met he was like hey i'm from you know washington blah 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 issaquah from your like, neck of the woods oh our yeah. manager was from issaquah what's up yeah 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 so he, he's yeah, a, yeah cool. he's funny hilarious guy right right but then of course spent a lot of his time in in chicago so he's got that connection with you I guys. He's, uh, yeah, I think he's back there, actually. Always, <laughs> always will be, right? Well, he was, yeah, I think like he lived in like some, like some island for like a year. And then like, I forget which island Coast, it Costa was. Rica, maybe? Or, I um... don't remember the island now. Yeah, but it was like, it, it looked pretty, pretty nice. So like paradise. Yeah, it looked nice. And then, uh. And then he moved. No, he moved to Philadelphia, and then uh, I saw him there too. We hung out there a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, as far as like just growing up here, we were 
back back then each scene was kind of its own scene and now and again we would go and and see like a hardcore show or something in Seattle because we couldn't go see like the Nirvanas and the uh like Mud Honey they were all playing in 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 bars and so it was all 21 and over yeah. and back then it was really hard to do all ages shows it was a big liability it was like so they had these non-profit venues that would do the shows and then if you just so we just did our own shows and we went to our own local shows yeah. in Bremerton around Bremerton and and kind of had our own scene but like I don't think many of those bands made it out I know there was like Hester Prine and um there was coffin break i don't know if you remember coffin uh, break. They, yeah. they were from seattle really but they would come over and play bremerton uh no, they, i remember that band yeah but it was all like back then it was we didn't have the ramones influence and we didn't have the the california influence as much in seattle in the seattle pacific northwest was scene it, it was grunge was it, it was like, like dark it was darker it was like all the punk was like poison idea and like you know it was heavier stuff <laughs> They're so, from what Portland? Uh, yeah. Probably, yeah. Then they would come up and play Seattle all the time, and okay. Um, but more like stuff like that was like kind of the big thing. Yeah, you were at, and then you know MXPX. Cool. We were inspired by the Descendants and Screeching Weasel, and you know things like that, right. and right. Um, and su you know suicidal tendencies. So I had like some hardcore you know roots to me, and and I liked I liked Gorilla Biscuits on the East Coast and stuff like that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but when we came out, we were like the softest punk band around because everybody else was so heavy. And so, you know, we we're like, so people would make fun of us by playing with no distortion. Say, who's this? -na 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 oh. oh, it's MXPX. <laughs> oh. I mean, things, we weren't heavy enough. We weren't oh, heavy shit. enough. We didn't have the right amps. We didn't have the right pedal, you know. Right. And we didn't know because we were just kids, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just plug we're in and play. They're probably all tuned down, I bet. Yeah, you know? yeah, probably, yeah. But, you know, you, when you're coming up, you have to have thick skin being in a punk band because, you know, you're going to get spit on. You're going to get cussed at. You're going to be told you suck because you probably do, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we did. So, you know, it's like, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a different scene then for sure. But over the years, it, it got good in Bremerton, um, you know, doing our own shows and and there was a bunch of other bands that were were doing pretty well but nothing like chicago nothing like i mean i i don't even know what st louis would be like but um but chicago back in the day has just so many bands i can think of that that really still are almost around today you know so um, yeah a lot of the seattle bands kind of are gone you know they don't even have an instagram page or you know whatever so <laughs> not that that's like that important but it just shows that they're not probably active right now you know so you know i got a question for you i mean like what so you know i would imagine like as you said all those shows were 21 and over like that grunge scene probably had to make a a, a big impact on you guys right because i mean not only is it local but it was it was pretty big internationally you know yeah. so like i i would think that like the mud honey and nirvana and and uh, well, Soundgarden and some of those bands probably had to have played some kind of a role in that area. I don't, I don't really know the answer. Like, I don't know. Kind of curious. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, if, those if that's true or not, because I would think it would be, but I, I, I'm not from that area, you know. Yeah, no, just like everywhere else, everybody joined a grunge band, and I was a fan of all those bands. We all were in the band. Um, Yuri and Tom from MXPX, they they actually went to see Nirvana. But by the time we could go, I didn't go. But uh, they went. It was at Key Arena, which is like a giant hockey arena. And uh, okay. so, I mean, they couldn't even get – they couldn't really – we couldn't see them. Maybe there was probably some party that we could have gone to or something. But we didn't really know about it until it was already – they were already big. So, like oh, I said, I the, the scenes back then, it's not like you found I out – yeah, we didn't we didn't know about we might have like heard about Nirvana's one of like a bunch of grunge bands, but like they we didn't know about them until they were big, really. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I yeah. got gotcha. you. I thought maybe like Yeah, I'm trying to like get the timeline here because like uh 
I mean, for, we're probably going like with some of those bands are probably going like 87, eight. I mean, eight, anywhere from like what? 87 to like 93, 94. Yeah. Maybe. Well, like, my, probably, my, like I know a lot of those bands were kind of going pretty early like that. So I don't know. I was curious if that played like an influence a my, role like over that area. Yeah. You know, I would think it would have, but my first, um, uh, my first like show t in Seattle that was not like a big arena type show that was like a punk show was all I went to see all on their percolator tour. And okay. that had to be like, I was in ninth grade. And so I think that was 1991, something okay. like that. Um, and so like, that was literally when I just started getting into being able to go see shows that weren't local shows. And right. um, I was probably all in that same year, you know, you kind of remember you go, Oh, everything happened in such a short time back then. Like, a million things happened in one year when we were kids, right? It seems like, and, and it is true if you think about it, it but yeah. So, but yeah, so I think grunge was coming out right when we were just able to go to some shows, but most of those shows were all still at bars. And so, right. and then they went big. And then we were like, okay, well we're doing our punk thing for a while. And then by the time we wanted to see Nirvana play, you know, it was Smells Like Team Spirit, like no shit. Then it, then it it was already kind of big and untouchable for you guys yeah. on a local level. Yeah, yeah I yeah. got gotcha. you. Okay, just curious about that, just because, uh, just because I was. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Mud Honey was sort of like touchable, kind of <laughs> touch me up okay. sick. But uh, yeah, yeah. But they were kind of like they they weren't as big as Nirvana, obviously. But they were friends with them, and they would play with them, and yet they would play with right. other smaller bands. So, like, they were kind of like our hero band as well. Like, we would really pay attention to them. I know Yuri was a huge fan of, I think Dan Peters was the drummer of uh, Mud Honey, and um, he was always talking about Mud Honey back in the day. I just remember. But another band, uh, Seaweed, from, from Spanaway, I think, Tacoma area, um, kind of post-punk too. I mean, not the kind of punk that, you know, MXPX definitely became or whatever and, and that you guys were doing. So it's like, like I said, I think they were heavily influenced by the grunge scene, but still a punk band, in my opinion, right. still a punk band, but I don't know if anybody right. would have, else would call them punk. Well, I know a lot of those guys listen to punk too, you know, so it's kind of like listen to punk and listen to Black Sabbath and listen to, I don't know. Yeah. I threw it all together. So, yeah, that's kind of why I was a little curious because, like I said, I'm not from that area. But it sounds like, yeah, it was before your time. Yeah, it was. It was. And even Bremerton yeah. had a scene before my time where it was a place called Natasha's. Um, the Descendants played there. GBH played there. Um, a couple of like a couple other bands like that that were that are actually you would you know, staples of the punk scene back then. And, and it's just like, I didn't even know that place existed until here I am coming up in like 1991, start about to start a band. Uh, MXP started in 92, but, uh, and then finding out, you know, that this band, the descendants that I had this cassette tape of came to Bremerton. I'm like, what? Really? Like, Whoa. Okay. Cause to me, punk rock was like as big as anything, as big as you too. You know, if you were a band that I liked, you and you were on tour, you must be, you must be doing well, right? Yeah, yeah. I, that's funny that you say that. I, I've heard a lot of people. Uh, you know, my friend John, who does in Screeching Weasel, he has a podcast too um, that he does called Jughead's Basement. And like every time I listen to that, a lot of the people that are on there say the same thing. Like, well, you know, like I kind of thought Minor Threat and Queensryche were the same thing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know like I, I hear stuff like that all the time, you know, like when it's starting out and like it's it's always kind of funny and everybody laughs. But um, but yeah, I mean, in a way, it's kind of it, it's kind of it, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. I like. You know, for a while, like you kind of, well, for me anyway, I was like kind of a punk purist for a long time, but now it's like I don't really care anymore. You know, yeah. um, I like the Ramones, I like ABBA, I like Slayer, I like, you know, I like uh, Metallica, I like Death Cab for Cutie, all about the same. You know what I mean? So it's mm. just kind of, I don't know, I'm a weird dude, I guess, but, you know, yeah. I guess. 
kind of what happened with age or something. I think so. I think, you know, just the more music you listen to, the more you kind of, you see the, the common threads rather than the differences. And obviously being, you being in the entertainment industry for so many years, you know, it's like, yeah, we're all just out here trying to, trying to make something beautiful happen, you know, to life and, uh, and spread it. But, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, I used to be, I used to be adamant about only listening to punk rock, only listening to like Black Flag and Circle Jerks and things like that. Yeah. And all the same way. And I listened to, I heard the first time I heard Tom Petty, uh, probably maybe not the first time I probably heard like his songs on the radio as a kid and not known, but the first time I like somebody's list, check this Tom Petty song out or whatever. I was in that phase and I did not like Tom Petty. I was like, I don't like Tom Petty. And I threw it out. I was like, nah, you know, like yeah. I don't like any of this stuff. And, and it's yeah. funny. Like I tell that story just, just to like in, illustrate that, like he's one of my favorite artists period, you know? Yeah. No, uh, I'm, I'm the same <laughs> as you because like I grew up hating Tom Petty. Yeah. I hated Bob Dylan. What's up with his voice? The Beatles, <laughs> right. Right. I hated the Beatles and I hated the beach boys and all four of those bands. Like I absolutely kind of worship now mm. at my age um i it just didn't there was something about those bands on the radio and you know for me what what it was is like a lot of those songs that i grew up with i kind of didn't like and i still kind of don't like but if you do a deep dive you find out tom pig's got a lot of great songs it's not like you know his radio songs are kind of like not my favorite really <laughs> you know what i mean um, and, and the same with the Beatles and the Beach Boys and Bob Dylan, especially I mm -hmm. like I grew up really not liking Bob Dylan. And now I absolutely love him to death. So um, very, very, very odd. But, um, you know, usually when I hear a band like I like them, I like them for life. You know, that was kind mm -hmm. of the opposite. Those bands I didn't like at first and then they grew on me as I got older. Yeah, you know, I mean that. That's, I love them. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, yeah, no, I'm I, right with you, with Petty. I found that anytime, any anything you do, like if you take time, you'll either realize you hate it or you like it more. And and if it's truly good, even if it's truly good, you might not like it. To be honest, right? But but like your record, I would say everybody listen to it, but listen to it two times because everybody's heard punk records so many times, you know people like tend to just not give it the time of day but right. I, I try to give a record two listens always like just give it two listens you know because there's always things you're going to notice and and then if it then if it's not then you don't feel bad about moving on because there is a lot there's a lot out there there it, there's not only a lot out there but then just some records just grow on you and they a band mm -hmm. that i i like quite a bit alkaline trio mm -hmm. first time i heard here to infirmary i thought that's oh, okay it's not it's not as good as that one song or not good as that other song i was like oh, i'll give it another listen it wasn't bad but didn't blow me away second time oh, that's pretty good third time damn that's really freaking good fourth time you know what i mean like yeah. just liked it more with each listen like i thought it was like create like just got better and better with each listen so um, you know, that happens to me a lot with a lot of bands too, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of just gets better with, with, with the list and like, so maybe something just doesn't click the first time or whatever. I think that's you know? em endemic of, of, uh, melodic punk rock is it's not always like hooks you right away. Like a, like a pop song on the radio would maybe, but like, if you give it time, it will grow and it seeps into you. And, and I think when those songs hit you it's better because you have like a better experience overall in life because you have some of these favorite songs. There's songs that I just, some that I can't, you know, I, I forget about and I'll come back to and I'm like, I can't believe I let this song out of my daily listen or, you know, just whatever, you know, like, cause music, man, it just hits you in a way that, that nothing really else can not, not I even a TV or uh, yeah. No, movies no and I've been, that. yeah. And, and we're biased, of course. Of course, I'm, but yeah, of course. <laughs> we're biased, but I mean, I think music is the best art medium in the world, but easily too. Like it's way better than movies and, and art, and, and and I love all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. I, I love love all that stuff to death. But like music hits me in a in a way that all all other art doesn't. 
it, it makes me feel things that I've never felt with anything else, you know, like, wow, what is that vibe? I don't, I can't even put my finger on it. I wouldn't even know how to put it into words, but it feels really cool. What is that? You know, I've had that my whole life, you know, since I was a little kid. I think that's like um, one of the magics about uh, what makes music kind of magical, you know, not to be sound corny, but it's just, it's, it is, you know, um, I don't know, beautiful thing. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's really unexplainable, like you say. Like I don't know what to say about it. It's just there's something, there's something this, you know, amazing. Well, I, I do know what to say about it. Take break it down to three chords, you know, like just one, four, five. We've done I don't know how many songs I've written and you've written with those chords, but like, how do we keep coming up with a new idea that feels fresh? And you can put it up to like I do this. I'll, I'll like. If I think something sounds like another song I've wrote, I'll, I'll like listen to it. Like, no, it's different. How did that happen? Like, it's the same chords. You know, some of the same words. I mean, you know, you're using some common language at some point, but like, you got to put it together in a new way. And I don't know what it's what to say, but magic. But you know, it's like, how does that work? It's so simple I, yet, yeah. I don't know. I I think. Uh... If you're able to do it, you're, you know, consider yourself lucky, you know? Um, yeah. Pretty, pretty cool thing. I mean, I can imagine you would, you've probably seen a lot of stuff uh, throughout your time. Uh, a lot of places that most people don't get to go to, uh, experiences that they didn't get to have, uh, whether, you know, whether it's traveling or even just playing a really great show, you know, where people are into you know, something that you created, you know, that's a, that's a really special thing. You know, it's, I think like, I don't know. Like, I don't think. Yeah. There's what nothing there? quite like it's that. Like you don't, you, <laughs> yeah. I think that's why you got people in it for life, you know? Yeah. They get addicted to that sold out show, but I mean, it's so much more than just that. Obviously it's, it's, no, I, that, it's I, the, that's uh, kind of what I'm saying too. But, but it's, the, just, it's so much more than that. Yeah. It's not, it's not even, to I wouldn't get... even say it's it's a portion of that. I'd say it's so much, so much more than that. Because it's not just walk out on stage and that it's like the journey that it took to get there and the fact that, you know, if you you can do it you know, you can do it again and you can do other things. It's like, yeah, life is like that, right? Is is you you have to put time in to sure. get whatever, you know, to get something meaningful. I, I you know, there's no easy button, the it is what it is. I mean there's easier paths but you still have to make one foot in front of the other to get where you're going you know and and i think maybe that's why when you walk out on stage you know as a band as a you know a group of people that have just con gone through it could be as simple as just a long drive to a show right where you're a little tired but you're also wired and you're ready to just blow off some steam i mean that's very real and that's that's payment in and of itself. That's why so many bands do this for free and complain about, ah, oh, there's no money, but hey, I'm having the time of my life because you do get something out of it. It's for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think that's also really important to, you know, that you do need to do it for yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you kind of, if when you write a song, it should be for you first and then the audience second. Now, that's the way I look at it. It's not necessarily, I think everybody has to subscribe to that, but I think it's important um, that you like what you what you do. I don't know, time, you know, life is short, you know? Like, mm -hmm. why, why, why mess around with it? You're right. You know, you know just do, do what you love to do and, and, and get it out there. I agree. Do what you can, doing it. So... No. Speaking of which, before we we wrap it up, uh, are you going to do any shows on the record? Uh, for the record, have you been? Well, the record is. I have um, small children, three small children, so they're not vaccinated, and so it's it's a it's a continual conversation in the mm -hmm. house. Um, now, vaccines are being rolled out pretty soon, or they have been, I, I want to say. Maybe one of them has been. But I have a four-year-old, so he's not able to get anything. Yeah, it's better so to leave the young kids probably it's, be. It's, it's one of those things that we've been talking about quite a bit. 
on and off, you know, it, of course I'm itching to play. Um, you know, I, I miss playing, I miss seeing people, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a lot, but, um, at the end of the day, just kind of got to keep evaluating on what's best for the kids. Yeah. And it's just kind of a, yeah, it's, it's just tough. No, I you agree. Know, Don't. I mean, I mean, it's we, not we worth. Want, I want to get there. I yeah. want to get there for sure. But it's just, you know, it's just we kind of play it day by day, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. I mean, it's not worth your children's health for sure to do just do some shows for your new record. I mean, it's a great record. People can listen to it. They'll be ready to see a show when next year or the year after, whatever you know. And yeah. uh, I people understand that if they take the time to listen to this podcast for one. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool. All right, good, good. What about uh, have you have you considered doing a live stream or anything like that? Have you done any? Uh, yeah, I did one for Lookout Records. Um, I did. What's the experience like? Does it feel weird? Like what? How how was the? Uh, did you just do it at home with the pro? We, we, yeah, yeah, kind of like what we're doing now. I just, but I just picked up my guitar. I mean, one one of the 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 streams that we did like. You know, he ended up sending me like a, a special mic and everything, and he wanted me to do things in a certain way. But um, it, it ended up working out pretty well. So, um, you know, I was happy that he actually wanted to do all that. Um, good, good. So yeah, that that was cool. Um, but no, I've I've done a couple other like I did like a kid's birthday party one time. Like just played like a song. Um, you know, it was a a guy I know from 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 San Diego. He's like, you know, would you do this? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, so he put me on zoom and I played a song. Nice. You know, so I've done stuff like that, but, um, and and like I said, the the lookout thing, and I did one other thing. It was, um, trying to think of what the name of it now. Oh God, I'm I'm losing it. I did something. Yeah. Another, no worries. I mean, once you do it, you got, you know, there's new things coming, new information always. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that sounds good. I'm sure maybe we'll see another one in the future. But uh, until then, dude, it was great talking to you. Great to get to know you a little bit. Thank you so much for for taking the time. No, thank you. I like I, said, I don't think I've ever met you before. I no, feel like I've so. known you forever. Look at this. I know, I know. It's great, man. I, I yeah. You know, I, I really enjoyed the power the, of punk rock. It is. Um, it is. And and uh, a little bit of wisdom, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like yeah. realizing that we're all kind of very similar. You know, we're out here in our on our islands writing our songs, but like Dan's over, you know, in St. Louis area, and I'm over here in Washington, and we're kind of doing the same things, you know. Six degrees of separation, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, and it's pretty interesting. Yeah, um, but no, thank you for having me on your podcast. Uh, you know, we'd love to come back sometime if you would have me and. Um, yeah, absolutely. Again. You're welcome anytime. Where can people find you on socials? Uh, type in our name <laughs> Dan Vapid and the Cheats underscore. Facebook. Yeah, Instagram, <laughs> uh, Twitter. I don't have it in front of me. I'll put it I up think, on the notes. I think they can figure it out. I'll yeah. put it up on the show notes. Um, no worries. I, I had a feeling that, that that question might come up. I was a little unprepared for that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Not an important one. We'll, we'll put it in the notes. And the new record's out, Escape Velocity. Go check it out, everybody. Great. Thank you, Mike. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it, Dan. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.